right, Monday morning, we are heading out in the Guitar V. We're gonna go as far as Idaho Falls, maybe a bit further, depending on what comes up. But yeah, feels like we just got out of this thing. Loading back in and gonna throw on a new record and hit the road. Climb aboard, baby, we're going. <laughs> through a little snow coming over Snoqualmie Pass and there's something very like unnatural about driving in an RV through a snowstorm but we made it through just fine and here we are in Ellensburg, Washington be in Idaho in about three hours. How was it out there Trevor? Dude, not good. Yeah we're just crawling right now. We might be camping on the side of the road. <laughs> Yeah. A little unexpected weather. We are not going down the West Coast anymore. Yeah, it's been hairy the whole time. Uh, we saw a couple of semis that ran off the road that were all heavy boot. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a fun little adventure, but it's my turn to take the wheels, so let's get it done. made it through the snowstorm. We drove about five or six hours today. And the first thing that we're taking home with us is a 1963 Fender Stratocaster, but the body is Carina, which is so freaking rare. This would be the second one I've seen in my life. It's so strange that Fender would use a Carina body, but they did. So the story with this one, when this gentleman found it years ago, it had a little route here where some cowboy put some funky little switch. He actually had another 63 pet guard, so he swapped them. Sold his other 63 and kept this one for a long time. He hooked me up with this. Fender Love and Care. I love these old, you know, little pens and stuff they'd send to the dealers back in the day, and you don't really see them anymore because everyone holds on to them, but that's pretty cool. It's gotta be from the 70s, judging by the font, but. So yeah, that and a Karina 63 Strat. So we're off to a good start. We're gonna go ahead another warehouse and dig through some stringed instruments, but stoked. Oh man. The dude did it all and collected it all. I mean, it's like crazy. That's what wow. you're saying. Like, yeah. Do you play it? A level. Cool. She played it with her grandpa. Oh. They used to play together. Oh, that's perfect for you. They're a little bit smaller, yeah. nice and light. Yeah, yeah that's the one thing. So not like, <laughs> this would be a good one for you to, to jam on at this stage of the game. I mean, it's light, it's cool, it's vintage. just hung out this storage unit for two hours and I went through all the gear, bunch of kind of funky, interesting stuff, some student models, obscure pieces, some changes, but all cool stuff that we dig. My favorite part was they were nice enough to sell me a bunch of old show posters and posters. I, you know, if I can't afford the guitars, I, anything else vintage is cool with me. Ken got some posters. Uh, we got like two tubs of old records just a bunch of gear and stuff. So the RV is like half packed already first night of the trip. So, so far very successful and very cold. The wind is uh, taking the toll on the Blackstone. It's, um, well, it's just not getting hot enough. I'm about to pull these. I like it rare. Maybe that one stays on a little bit longer, but. All right, boys. 
Here's to a fine steak dinner and a fine day through a blizzard and a fine way to end it with gear Alrighty. acquisition. Okay, so we're heading out of Coeur d'Alene and today we are on a journey to Idaho Falls. We're gonna hook up with our, our good friend Eric Daw out there and there's another gentleman out there who has a treasure trove of amazing Gibsons and Fenders from the 1950s. The only downfall that we see is the weather report says there's horizontal snow in Idaho Falls and on the way, so we're getting the road now then. Heading that way. Just landed in Idaho Falls, which will be kind of our home for three days. So glad that we made it here safe. Definitely uh, put the old ace to the test, but she does good. And uh, yeah, getting ready for a lot of excitement in the next couple days. Wednesday morning in Idaho Falls, and we are gonna head over to this gentleman's home who has some very cool guitars, from what I understand. Hi. Jay. Hi, nice <laughs> to meet you. What happened was, I was gonna get one of these from Weber. The reverb unit? Right. And when I was talking to him, he'd say, you know, I got this guy and he's got chronic fatigue syndrome. He's so sick because I was a urologist. If you could help me build you a great day, here's his number. I think he built his last rocket just around that time. And that was kind of his favorite amp because he could hear, I don't know, just so like a dog. Despite everything else. Yeah, yeah he could hear, going on, and yeah. he would hear all these levels of harmonics. So Kenny said, well, if you want to make a deluxe sound, you know, you crossed all these things, I said, do this. This is what you're giving me? He says, well, just bring it down. So I brought it down, and he rewired it to this. So basically, it's original here, and then an extra gain stage here. Yeah. This is the fourth day out here on the road, and today is one of the days I'm really excited about and looking forward to. We're going to go over to Eric Daw's house, and Eric's a dear friend, and we're really excited to have a little reunion with him today and show you a little bit about his world. And here we go. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, you look so do you, man. You look oh just my gosh, I know. You look the same. Years. <laughs> wow. Hi, Eric. How's it going? Uh, doing good. Good to see you. Too. Good. It's great to be here. How's the RV? She's rolling. I love like it. like a dream. It's all the Breaking other stuff. Breaking bone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to shut the door. 
Oh my god, Derek. I feel like I just rolled up to work. <laughs> you did! <laughs> I put you guys right to work. I was kind of looking for something like outside of town because I wanted something, you know, with a decent sized lot and a shop and a country feel. And this was right in the middle of town. It's a double lot. It backs up to the canal with a gravel road that's like, you know, a private road. It's, it's super country. Private. Yeah. I remember yeah, seeing the listing, listing way back in the day when you yeah. were like living in Seattle trying to yeah. lock it down. Eric, good to see you, man. Check this out, man. Yeah, I got this thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I haven't sold her yet. Yeah, the transmission needs help still, but that window closest to you was shattered. I just replaced that. Well, you had just the side repainted? He already had the finish. Had the refit on yeah. it, right? I would have gone with a different color because this is, it should be like a dark metallic green. Is Ike still doing his comic book? Yeah. Oh, he's so genius, man. They hang out. They hang out up here while I work downstairs and. Beautiful. Perfect. They can race their cars and see which one's the best. <laughs> In style, you got the Harmony, Fender, Marshall. Was that a silver tone? I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, Branson, all the real Branson. gear. We get up here and play music sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, man. It's funny, like, that's all I wanted to do when I was a kid, but nobody around me was doing that. Mm. But see, my kids are exposed to it all the time, and so they think it's just something Dad does. It's like, yeah, we don't want to do that, Dad. That's, <laughs> Eric and I had this idea of doing three pinup custom guitars, but had some importance to kind of the history of Emerald City guitars. So this one is Janice. When I was probably 16, this little gal rolled up uh, with a thermometer case and a, the coolest blackguard ever, and it just was a really amazing experience. One of the first like out of the closet blackguards that I ever got to experience. This one, long time ago, uh, Mr. Billy F. Gibbons was in the shop and he, he actually bought an old um, White Guard Esquire. It was like a 55 Esquire. And Eric always really told me about the magic of White Guard Tellies, which I still believe. So he named this one Gilligan after Billy's wife, who um, is a sweetheart friend of the shop as well. So just amazing, you know, Black Guard, White Guard, the two coolest guitars ever made. And then kind of a recent one. I don't know if you guys remember that cool 1958 um, Stratocaster that came in recently that left the factory in black finish, had all the cool family photos. My buddy Derek Ransford bought that guitar. One of the coolest strats ever. You know, the white guard with the black finish. I fell in love with that, so I had to do a remake on that guitar. I really like the way the finish and the fit guard turned out on, on the black guard. I do two different versions of a five-way switch in a T-style guitar. Um, but uh, the the version that is in these guitars, that's the bridge pickup. That's both pickups out of phase. That's both pickups in phase. That's both pickups wired in series, so it's a humbucker. And then that's this pickup. And this one's a standard five-way. Standard. No tone standard on that bridge pickup. Right? That's this correct. Is traditional. Yeah. Yeah. The Buddy Holly story. Have you seen that movie with? Gary Busey, it's not accurate at all, but it's a classic movie and I just fell in love with the music and I fell in love with the guitar. I was like maybe seven or eight years old and I told my parents like, I, I need a guitar, I need one. And so I got one, it was just a little plastic, you know, guitar, like almost a toy, but I loved it and learned all those Buddy Holly songs and I just thought it was so cool. The following Christmas, I got an electric guitar. I remember just being blown away and fascinated with how it worked. So like one of the first things I did was t I took it apart and just started tinkering at like eight or nine years old. I got a reputation as like, oh, have Eric adjust this, you know, <laughs> when we're like 10 and 12. And when I got out of high school, there's a music store here in town in Idaho Falls called Chesbro. It's been there over a hundred years. It's an Idaho Falls staple. They were the Ibanez distribution center for the whole western half of the United States. And I got a job there. They moved me down into the repair department. We did customer repairs 
and Ibanez warranty repair work for anybody that had a problem with their Ibanez guitar from any of the dealers that we sent the guitars to. Setup after setup after setup after setup. It really taught me like, okay, time management is key, you know, organization skills. Like, you were expected to set up so many guitars a day, and I don't remember how many it was, but it was a lot. It was a ridiculous amount. But I got fast at assessing, like, what's wrong with this guitar? What needs to be done? So I was working at Chesbro when a good friend of mine named Destry passed away. He died in this freak bicycle accident. It's the weirdest thing. This is like 1998, 1999. But after he died, his parents approached me and, and said, will you come run Destry's store? We were close and it really hit me hard and I was so depressed that I like didn't, I didn't want to go to work, didn't, like I took some time off from Chesbro anyway. And so when they asked me to run Destry's store, it seemed like a natural thing. It was called Deluxe Tone Records, it sold new and used records, used guitars, vintage clothing, all kinds of stuff. And in the back room, I uh, set up a little guitar repair shop too. And it was cool, and it was a cool shop, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to play music, really, so loaded up everything I could in my van and drove out to Seattle with like $3,000 in my boot and some guitars and some records. There was one guitar store that I really wanted to work at, and that's Emerald City Guitars. And I went in there. The lady I was with at the time, she was more forward than I am, but she was like telling Jay, like, you need to hire this guy. <laughs> and uh, landed a job as Emerald City Guitars uh, in-house tech. When I moved to Seattle, it was culture shock for me because I was a farm kid, basically, you know. Like, I couldn't believe how fast people walked or spoke. Like, it kind of blew my mind. Like. I loved working there, and I loved the experiences that I got. I couldn't have gotten that kind of exposure and that kind of, uh, like, education, you know, anywhere else. Man, that was huge for me. It was huge. And it was only when I started having kids and became a little more family-oriented that I wanted to get back to Idaho Falls and leave the big city. I figured, okay, I've been here 15 years. It's been a good run but I think it's time to go back to my hometown. I moved back here in 2017. I started putting together guitars probably around 2005 or so. I haven't made that many. I think 209, I think, is where I'm at. Like, I really don't make that many, you know? I think I made one and painted it and, and put whatever random pickups in it, and it turned out nice, I thought. This is cool, but I think I can make a better one. So I made another, and I thought, this is cool, I think I can make a better one. And this just snowballed into like every guitar I make still, like 20 years later, I'm like, this is cool, I think I can make a better one. <laughs> There's a little bit of magic in what makes a guitar special. A really solid guitar where everything is really rock solid, the string, jumps out because nothing is stealing its energy. It resonates. The string rings out and it's not robbed of any energy. Like a lot of guitars, even new guitars that are supposed to be great guitars, the frets aren't seated properly. So they're in the neck, but they're not solid with the neck. And so when you fret that note, that fret is able to wiggle just the tiniest bit and it's able to suck some of that string energy up. The other thing that I aim for is a guitar that's slightly microphonic. And it's a delicate balance because if it's too microphonic, then it's gonna squeal like pointing a microphone at a speaker. But if it's just a little bit microphonic, then it will do this magic thing feedback loop thing where it will re-amplify the sound of the guitar coming through the amp. Not only is it amplifying what's going on electrically with the pickups, but it's amplifying what's going on acoustically with the guitar just a little bit. And that just adds to the tone enough that it's a noticeable thing. When you play a guitar that's slightly microphonic at like stage volume, 
you're like, whoa, this guitar pushes back. You can feel it and you can hear it. You're like, what is this magic? It's pushing back a little bit. And that's what it is. Everything's solid and it's slightly microphonic. That's like, to me, that's the secret recipe. Take care, guys. Drive safe. Okay. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right, good morning. It is Friday about 9.30 a.m. and we are heading home officially, taking a different course than we did to get here, which is a little exciting. Had an awesome day with Eric Da and just cool to see his whole operation. He's just kicking ass out there and uh, it was just so good to see him. You know, I spent half my life working with him every day and it's been about six years since we really got to hang out. So it was just really fulfilling. Last night we got back to the spot and we, we had like a, probably a half an hour and we were just like in tears laughing as we were looking around and you know the RV starts nice and clean and fresh and it's just like it's packed with speakers, records, guitars, amps in the shower. I mean it's just like <laughs> it looks like the magical mystery tour in here but we're just we feel so lucky and we're just having such a blast. So beautiful. Wow. <laughs> the boom boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear that train coming. It's coming around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when, but I'm stuck in some prison. And time keeps rambling on. And when I hear that whistle blowing on down the sand and tone When I was just a baby, my mama Cheers. told me son, Last supper. Always be a good boy, don't ever shoot your gun Well, I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die That's right And when I hear that whistle blowing I hang my head and cry. That's right. Woo woo, take a boom.
Well, I hear that train a coming, it's coming around the bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Well, I'm stuck in Folsom Prison, and time keeps rambling on. And when I hear that whistle blowing on down the sand. Pretty rough. Want to do another one? Yeah. <laughs>